Welcome back to Emergency Talk with Jesse. Today I am joined by Tanika, Miss Tanika Johnson and Victoria Siegel. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to come here. You're welcome. Thank you. What inspired you to become a nurse? Uh, 20 years ago when I first decided or thought about what I was going to do, I became a nursing assistant and as a nursing assistant I was able to work with the registered nurses and helping them provide care to patients. And at that time watching them and seeing what they did, I decided that becoming a registered nurse is what I wanted to do. Whereas Tanika had a role model in seeing nurses and working with nurses, I didn't have that experience. But I was in college and floundering, not knowing what I wanted to study. And then I started to become a serious student and started to excel in sciences. So that led me to studying nursing. Now, what schools did you attend mm -hmm. and where did you receive your degree in nursing from? I began at Suffolk Community College. I received an associate's degree in nursing. And then I went on for my uh, baccalaureate degree and graduate degree at Thomas Edison State College in New Jersey and currently I'm working on my PhD in nursing education. I received my bachelor's from Adelphi University. I received my master's degree from the University of California San Francisco. I'm a clinical nurse specialist in neurosurgery and I received my doctorate in education from Dowling College. Mm -hmm. Now what kind of qualities would you say a good nurse needs to possess? The qualities that a good nurse would need to possess would be able to be able to multitask, be detailed oriented, be able to um, practice the profession of nursing, but always being able to keep the patient in the center in the center of what you do as well as their family. I think, in addition to what Tanika said, I think that students, I mean, nurses, nursing students who want to be nurses, need to be caring, professional people need to be have great communication skills, um, willing to be a patient advocate, willing to speak to many people in the disciplines that are involved with the healthcare, and um, be involved in patient education. And there's so many different facets of nursing. And they have to be actually multi-talented. Uh, but if they care about the patients, that's, that's a big part of it. What would you say the best approach would it take to when it comes to teaching nursing? When it comes to teaching nursing, uh, definitely staying current because uh, healthcare changes all the time and it's changing more rapidly now today than it did, you know, when I started many years ago. So um, I would say as a faculty member, staying current, but for me, I always try to uh, teach or allow the students to understand difficult concepts by seeing it through their eyes. So when I say seeing it through their eyes would be seeing it through the eyes of someone who's novice and inexperienced uh, and helping them c understand what it is that is complex about the patient or the uh, theory that they're trying to understand. In clinical situations, we take the patients into the hospital and they take care of patients and we supervise them, make sure that they're doing correct assessments on the patients and they have a good plan of care. In the lecture, we try to make it more exciting for the students and have them actively engaged in the learning. So some of the things we try are panopto education where it's a flipped classroom. They listen to the panopto of the lecture the night before, then have a basic understanding of the course material, come in the next day, and then separate them into group work and, and try to make it fun, have games and, and prizes and things. And then the lab, they either practice on each other with physical assessment skills and learning different skills with mannequins or they do the simulation lab where it's the high fidelity simulation. We're going to have that um, more in the new building that we have as well. Now what is your primary focus in the medical field? My primary focus in the medical field um, prior to when I was at the bedside taking care of patients on a day-to-day -day basis was emergency critical care nursing. So those patients were um, extremely sick. And so it was basically providing a high level of care to people who were very, very unstable. My other area um, is actually two other things. It's nursing education as well as nursing management. So those are the three things that I'm doing right now. 
through my career, I started as a psychiatric nurse, then I became a critical care nurse, then I became a clinical nurse specialist in neurosurgery, then I started teaching. And um, I love teaching, and I've been doing that ever since. But my area of research is in skin cancer research and education and health promotion and disease prevention. Now, can you take us through a typical day on the job for each of you? As a professor, um, my role here at Malloy is I am not teaching in the classroom. I'm actually teaching in the clinical area, so that would be a hospital. And so what I do is I have a group of students that are assigned to me at various hospitals on Long Island, and I take the students into those environments. Um, I prep. Uh, I would say an hour or two before they come in, I find the best clinical situations, the patients, the right fit for them with the nurse, and then we have a pre-conference where we discuss the disease processes, we discuss, um, you know, things that they're good at, things they're not good at, and what the expectations are going to be for the day, and then we go out and they physically take care of live sick patients, and then at the end of our day, our day would uh, conclude a post conference where we would discuss the things that were good about our day or bad about our day and um, that's basically the day. As a faculty member I teach in all three divisions of the nursing program. I teach undergraduate, graduate and doctoral and in the undergraduate I described basically what I've done with that class and the flipped classroom. Graduate I have mainly a seminar format with the students and it's mainly discussion and with doctoral, we're assisting them with their research projects and um, guiding them in that endeavor. So it's really, um, it's a great job, and I love being a faculty member here at Malloy. Now, are there any television shows that you feel accurately describe, depict the nursing profession? Um, I don't think that there's any, and my reasoning for that is again what a registered nurse does in a hospital setting or any acute care setting where a nurse is located I don't think that the TV shows that are out there right now depict us in a way that you as a professional nurse would be proud of I think that if they're mm -hmm. going to have these shows then there should be a collaboration with registered nurses so that they can put out there to the communities a proper depiction of what a nurse actually does so right now I would say no I think Tanika is correct, and I don't know if there's been a documentary shadowing a nurse, mm. uh, especially a critical care nurse, for a shift. That would be a great show to do, and because nursing is very multifaceted, and when you go to work, you don't know what your day is going to be like, and, and it can take in all different directions. And there are many different TV shows that can be entertaining, like House, but if if that was a real physician, he would be fired for his unprofessional way with patients and the things that that he has done in that job and um, nurse Jackie I watched that when I had a broken leg just for entertainment but it's not accurately depicting what a nurse does substance abuse can be a problem in the medical field um, because of easy access and because a lot of nurses hurt their back and so they can get hooked on to painkillers but the show itself does not accurately depict what a nurse does so with the current construction of a new nursing building, how do you think that will affect the nursing program? For myself, again, because I am in the clinical setting with the students, I think that this new building is going to allow them to have more hands-on practice um, with these new simulation um, um, mannequins that they're going to have because what they'll be able to do is they'll be able to practice the skills that they need to have on a human being, a live person, on a mannequin where they can uh, do things to it, you know, um, and actually get a response and have somebody there as faculty to help guide what's the best thing to do, what they shouldn't be doing. So I think from my um, perspective that it will give them a lot more practice before they come out to the real live world inside of a hospital with me. Mm -hmm. Tanika is correct that the sim lab will help them to practice in a safe environment and it also will house all of the nursing faculty in one building enabling us to have more time and you know proximity with each other to have dialogues and work on projects and I think it will make the whole program more cohesive we have 2,000 nursing students at Malloy College we have many many students so um, it's going to be great to have a new building what kind of stresses do these nursing students normally deal with? 
Well, nursing school takes away your life. When you become a nursing student, your life becomes nursing. Um, and what I mean by that is that you don't have a lot of the free time that other people do have, as well as you might also have, you might work, you might have a family. So I think that uh, the nursing students are stressed with juggling the demanding world of nursing education as well as their own personal lives and things that might mm -hmm. be going on. It, it definitely is a uh, balance and act, but it prepares them for what their lives will be once they get licensed to practice. Right. It's a very rigorous program. One needs to take it very seriously and you have to do very well. Um, you have to get a minimum of 78 to pass exams and, uh, and those kinds of things. Um, and for example, one course, the fundamentals course that I teach, consists of like a three-hour lecture, two-hour lab, plus a six-hour clinical, plus nine hours of documented lab practice, plus testing and six different skills. And that's one course, and that they're taking that with a few other courses. So they're very stressed. And you have to pass. And they have to pass. 78 is, uh, under 78 is failing. Wow. 77, actually, sorry. Now, <laughs> what kind of advice do you have for these aspiring <laughs> nurses? <laughs> <laughs> the advice is, as you heard us speak about right. what it's like and the stressors, again, to go into the profession of nursing, you have to want it. Uh, you can't just go in for the convenience of working 12-hour shifts or the salary that you might get. You have to be able to enjoy it because if you do enjoy it, you can sit years and years later like the two of us and be just as happy as being a professional nurse as we were when we first started. Mm -hmm. Right, I agree with that. Finally, let's say you weren't nurses. What profession do you think you would have? I would be a prosecutor. I would like to be a, a writer. Well, everyone, that's all we have time for today. I'd like to thank our guests, Tanika Johnson and Miss Victoria Siegel. Thank you. For more information on how you can be a part of the Malloy College Nursing Program, visit the academic session of malloy.edu and click on the Nursing tab. Tune in next week for another exciting edition of Emergency Talk with me, Jesse Picarello. <laughs>